I, most people have had, well, most people, some people have had these periods of grace or flow mm -hmm. or presence. And sometimes people who, who are not even spiritual sometimes spontaneously have these, you know, they suddenly go into an infinite state of grace and flow and where it's like everything is magical, everything is present, it's like the whole universe synchronizes and there's an effortless joy to life uh, and a stunning beauty. And often one can be catapulted and these states can last for various periods from days to weeks or even potentially months. And then, you, and then it seems like these, um, these states are lost. And in fact, um, actually, this is you know, part of classical literature with the saints, where they can have these beautific experiences, and then they sort of bemoan, why God has God abandoned me? Or they have this dark night of the soul, when these beautiful states suddenly seem to vanish. And um, the reason why one can have them is various. It could be a, a, like grace, or it could be spiritual work, or it could be like past life work, why these states suddenly come upon one. But the way that uh, you lose these infinite states of grace, that's something that um, I learned, and uh, I, I, I sometimes share it in this group. You know, I met Muji and I was catapulted you know, the eye disappeared, so suddenly there was the infinite light. The world disappeared, there was just this infinite light, uh, limitless light, love and power beyond, beyond all imagining. There was no thought, there was no this, there was no that, there was no time. But it was more, more beautiful than anything imaginable in this world. Nothing in this world could, con could compare. Because this world is like a veil of shadows compared to that experience. But... Um, Coming out, it's the, what happened was in that infinite light, that limitless light beyond all time, beyond all duality, there seemed to be a, a thought or a, a shadow of a thought seemed, this is how it, how it appeared, but seemed to emerge. And there seemed to be something like the impossible happened. There was a, seemed to have some form of identification or relationship. In that split second, you know, one, it was like one was cast out, I and mean, you have to use language and it's not perfect, cast out of the realm of infinite light into the room. Suddenly there was, there was just the experience of oneness in the room with Muji, just bliss and ecstasy, just tears running down the eyes. And the world was just in stunning beauty, uh, kind of a stunning, timeless beauty, but there was a world that was being witnessed. And Muji said, go out, and there was this beautiful presence, and everything was like in technicolor, uh, and absolute beauty. But then it seemed like um, uh, these thoughts started to pop in, like I have to go to work now, and something identified with those thoughts. And then the, the, um, the what I call the, the vibration level of consciousness dropped down more towards a normal level of consciousness. So how you lose this is that identification occurs with something, yeah? So usually if you're in a very high vibration, the identification will be with a thought. As soon as any thought is identified with meaning, then the flow state immediately goes down to a lower vibration. So it was like, now, for people who've done a lot of spiritual work, the potentiality for dropping out of flow states will be reduced because they've done a lot of spiritual work to make all their thoughts meaningless. But if you're catapulted into a state of infinite, into the infinite flow states, and you haven't done a lot of spiritual work, sooner or later, one of these thoughts within your consciousness will come up and they'll be purchased. So let's say someone is um, a love addict and they're like love addicted to George Clooney, you know. So they might suddenly go, one day they might be catapulted into a state of infinite bliss and love and joy. These wonderful flow states, because they haven't done the spiritual work on the thought of George Clooney, at some point, you know, they'll be in these beautiful states for a long period of time. And someone will give them a magazine with a picture of George Clooney on it. And then suddenly it'll seem like that flow state will disappear. I was in this beautiful state of spiritual grace for weeks, 
and somehow I came out of it, you know. And the coming out of it is because there's still something within the ego which is hookable, you know. There's still thoughts which have meaning or projections and when they come up, the ego grasps them and you lose the state immediately. So now, if you, when an advanced, when someone has done a lot of spiritual work, if they go into the flow state, it's going to be difficult for them to come out because they've done all the work. When I went into that spiritual state by being with a spiritual guru, I hadn't hardly done any spiritual work before. So it meant as soon as any thought, for example, I have to perform at work, came in, I, I, something grabbed it, it was still meaningful, that thought. And so the vibration, I was hooked out and pulled out of the infinite field. Whereas for a more seasoned uh, spiritual seeker, um, you know, they wouldn't have touched that thought and they would have remained in that state. So you're still vulnerable to whatever it is within your ego that, is, that still has meaning. So even if you do a lot of spirit, if you go to a spiritual group and you go on a high and you're in these wonderful spiritual states, because you still have thoughts within your ego which you haven't rendered meaningless and released the attachment to them, or the repressed feelings around certain things, then there's still a capacity for that, that thought if it arises in consciousness or something, or the universe may, may bring it out. Like um, if you go into an infinite state and you're, um, for example, an alcoholic, probably at some point someone's going to offer you a, f a free beer, you see, and, and, um, and that can pull you out of the state. And there's still something that's meaningful. So that's how you do it. And so when you become, if, you, if you're drawn to enlightenment, then if you're, if you're drawn to be in the infinite presence, and that's all you want, to be in that infinite field, then everything that the ego hooks into has to come under, you know, has to, has to be dissolved in terms of its ego identification. Because otherwise, every time you go off into an infinite field, every time that, that thought or that external trigger arises, you're just going to drop down. So the only way you can tra transcend that is to let go of all, all the projected meaning and payoff that thing has. Or otherwise, you just do spiritual work, you'll go off into the inf infinite field, but every time this thing happens, you'll, you'll pull back down again. So the only way is to, is to um, let it go. And the more you do spiritual work, there'll be less things in the world that can pull you out. Like, let's say, as an addict, I was addicted to alcohol, donuts, and, uh, and spending. So if I just transcend donuts, I might go into a good spiritual field. But uh, you know, every time I see alcohol or I get a thought of alcohol, I just drop, lose it. So eventually, if I transcend alcohol, then I'm probably going to stay in those spiritual states for a lot longer. But then every time you know there's a sale on, you know I'll lose my state because you know the, the Harrod sale is on now, so I'll just lose it for that. So if I transcend all three of them, it's unlikely if I only had three. Most people have a bit more than three then you know, you're going to stay in that field uh, you know, and you're not going to get pulled out of that field. 